U.S. officials say Israel launched a missile at Iran overnight. The strike was in retaliation for Iran's missile attack against Israel last week. So far, there have been no reports of casualties or major damage in Iran. Let's bring in CBS News national security contributor Sam Vinograd. She's also a former assistant secretary of counterterrorism and threat prevention for the Department of Homeland Security. Sam, welcome. So how do you assess the current risk to national security in the wake of this strike? Well, we are clearly in a new normal in the Middle East in which Iran and Israel are now willing to directly attack each other in their home countries rather than working indirectly or through proxies. At the same time, countries around the world are working to ensure that the situation doesn't escalate further. From a national security perspective, the United States government is undoubtedly focused on stopping the series of retaliatory operations that we've seen and really also ensuring that they don't directly impact Americans. The U.S. government has over 40,000 military personnel just in the Middle East, hundreds of thousands of American citizens, including diplomats. And so primary focus for President Biden and his national security team at the moment is ensuring that Iran does not think that the United States was directly involved in supporting Israel in Israel's reported strike against Iran uh, last night so as to avoid any Iranian attacks against U.S. assets in the region. The vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Marco Rubio, wrote on social media that Israel has the ability to strike targets in Iran from aircraft over Syria and Iraq. Sam, how much of a warning does Israel give other countries in the region about strikes like this? Well, to be clear, Israel has spoken publicly about their desire and intent to retaliate against Iran for Iran's unprecedented strike against Israel last weekend. In terms of private warnings with more specifics, we understand that Israel did let the United States know privately that it intended to strike back at Iran over the course of a day or two. And that was the safe thing to do. Israel is one of the United States' closest partners Israel giving the United States a heads up, even a general heads up, did allow, I would imagine, the United States to put extra security precautions in place to protect our personnel, and also is appropriate to continue messaging to the Iranians through private channels and through third-party intermediaries that the United States wasn't involved. So I would imagine that Israel gave the United States a heads up, and it is possible we shouldn't rule out the fact that Israel may have given other close partners like the UK a heads up as well. All right, Sam Vinograd. Sam, thank you. Thanks. More on the impact the attack is having on Iran, let's bring in Eric Loeb. He is an associate professor in the Department of Politics and International Relations at Florida International University and a non-resident scholar with the Middle East Institute's Iran program. Thanks so much for being with us, Eric. So is it possible to determine now how the people in Iran are actually feeling about this escalating conflict. Is, is it clear what kind of information they may actually be getting about this? Well, I think there's a lot of anxiety uh, coming with the uncertainty of the uh, situation based on individuals in Iran that I've had contact with. Uh, the most information that they received uh, in the moments leading up to the attack is that the airspace was closed, that flights were canceled. There were no signals or messages for them to take shelter. Um, so there was a bit of comfort in that. But still, um, the anticipation, the, the uncertainty certainly uh, contributed to the anxiety of many uh, Iranians leading up to this attack last night. Is it clear, Eric, what kind of impact this latest exchange will have on the region? Well, while no one wants to see these uh, this tit-for-tat exchange that we're seeing between um, major regional powers like Israel and Iran, I think that to some extent, uh, analysts could feel some guarded optimism about the future. The fact that both of these countries, as was discussed previously, are telegraphing, choreographing these attacks uh, before they happen, that they are trying to act in a targeted uh, fashion and operate with restraint, that they are restricting or limiting these attacks to military sites on both sides, as opposed to civilian population centers gives both sides hope, as well as the United States and other uh, international actors, 
that there can be de-escalation in this region and a moment of very high tension. Does that suggest to you, Eric, that these strikes and sort of the tit for tat that you just outlined is really aimed at their own domestic audiences? It is aimed at their domestic audiences, and I would even argue it's aimed at their domestic elite audiences. Mm -hmm. Both of these uh, politicians on both sides, Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel and the Iranian Supreme Leader in Iran, are in very fragile situations politically, domestically, and they both want to do this to signal to the hawks and the hardliners within their governments that they are willing to take action and at the same time do it in a very calculated way that is not designed to invite further escalation and engulf their their countries and the region in a in a broader conflagration. Um, on Iran, Iran appears to spend most of its money and resources on weaponry while we know that poverty is on the rise there nationwide. What is the government doing to protect its citizens? Well, the government in Iran is really, uh, as I alluded to in my previous response, uh, the, the citizens, unfortunately, are really not a, a priority. We, we've seen the way that the Iranian government has responded uh, to recent protests that it's had uh, in terms of the repression that it used to deal with them in terms of doubling down on controversial policies that may have fueled the protests to begin with. And for years now, the Iranian government, particularly since the UN, uh, U.S. maximum pressure campaign of 2018, have been dealing with crippling sanctions, have been dealing with a struggling economy, and yet, despite all the criticism, have not really done uh, much to turn it around and can continue to pr prioritize their military efforts uh, in the region. All right. We'll continue to watch uh, developments there. Eric Loeb. Eric, thanks for, so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.